Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned to find out more. Hey there, everybody in podcast land. This is Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. I am Hamza. And I am David. And who would we be? We have to follow the crowd on this one. It's the end of the year, so we have to do a year in review from a homie's perspective because everyone wants to know our perspective on 2017. There was so much to uncover, and we will try our best. I'm sure we won't cover everything since it was a year, but I think we can cover a great deal in this hour. So with that, um, welcome to the podcast, David, and how do you feel? I mean, another year has passed. It's kind of flown by, as most adults say, but what's your first take on 2017? Well, my first take is, wow, <laughs> we got through it. I can remember at the end of 2016, so many people saying, oh, I just can't wait for this year to be over, just getting to 2017. And I think 2017 was, I'm not coming from a, a, you know, what was better, bad or worse, but, you know, 2017 was just a wow year on all levels, at least for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And before we get into specifics, you know, since we're doing it from a homie's perspective, we, as of last week, we did our 45th podcast. So that's wow. no small feat. We actually, you know, we, we started out, of, you know, just sitting around so we even do a podcast. And here we are, what, nine months later with 45 under the belt and our calendar is pretty much full for the month of January. And we're getting a good following day by day from across the world. I was looking at, at our data. We have people from uh, India and China and Germany and, you know, even those people that speak that as our first language here in the States. You know, we're just getting increasing our reach out way more than I even imagined without heavy promotion. So I'm really excited from a homie's perspective for 2017 just for our podcast. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's uh, that's really good to hear. Wow, I didn't realize we were getting, you know, reaching outside of the states like that. But that's good to hear. Yeah, what's really interesting is that you know, with the web and, and the world being flat as it is for other arguments, you have people that are drawn to whatever the subject matter is, and so. I think what we're seeing is that, you know, one of the a success principle is just to kind of keep your nose down to the grindstone and don't really look up to see what other people are doing. And many people kind of crash and burn doing podcasts or that, you know, they start really hot and heavy and then it kind of wings. And I think the fact that we've continuously put out good content that people are picking up on it. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah. What about you? What what and you asked me when we first started, you know, my impressions of twenty seventeen and I was just like, Wow. So what about you? What are your impressions of twenty seventeen? I would say it's a year of resilience. And again, you know, we can go into different events of what happened because so much has happened in twenty seventeen. But just from a from a homie's perspective, you know, we were just sitting around to even do it, right? And it was kind of, I think it was the end of the first quarter when we actually <laughs> finally did it. And we had initially started out, well, let's, you know, let's do it once a month or let's do it once a week. And, and now, you know, we have a steady schedule of doing it twice a week. And yeah. we're now, I mean, we had a person, she was in Costa Rica. We have a person next month from South Africa. You know, we, we're getting people locally whom we love, but we're getting people across the world. And I think it, 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 I think it goes to the resilience for me for 2017 of keeping your head down. I think sometimes I, I always talk about uh, weapons of mass distraction, and it's easy to get distracted with so much that's going on in the news. But yeah. when, you, when you focus on what you need to get done, right, that stuff, not that it's irrelevant, but – It's like, how does it apply to me? How can I apply it in my life to take me to the next level instead of being reactionary? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It's a good point. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah. So what do you think was one of the biggest events, one of the biggest things? I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of, to me, I, I, what I see is a lot of, this year was just purging, purging on a lot of levels. <laughs> you know, mm. things are getting uh, called. Kind of... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying, like, a lot of, you know, things were coming to the surface. And um, maybe some of the old's going away, and there's just there's this new level of energy that's coming in. And it's not going to happen overnight or just in one year. But it's just kind of like, you know, maybe the past few years. Or, but a lot of purging is just how I've been kind of seeing it and interpreting it. What about you? Yeah, the way I, I would look at it, it, I would look at it, from two different vantage points. One is our podcast that we had with Jim Self, and he was talking about, you know, 2012. And it was just really interesting that there, there were a number of people that we interviewed this year that that was a defining moment for them. It was 2012. Like, what's happening mm-hmm. in 2012? It's supposed to be this mm-hmm. huge change. And it wasn't a the catastrophic, like most people imagine, like if you watch the news every day. But I think over time, people just slowly changed who they were. Like a lot of people are different in 2017 than they were in 2012. And Mm so I kind of look at it from that aspect. But I also, when you said it's a lot of purging, I look at last year and 2016 and 2017 from a numerology point standpoint in that 2016 was a, a year of nine and that was endings and completion so there were, I felt it was more purging in 2016 and from a numerology standpoint you know you, it's from zero to not or one to nine and since nine was last year one was this year it was a lot of new beginnings a new president a new this a new a lot of local a lot of local people with um a lot of uh, incumbents that were upset. You know, we were expecting that here in, in Georgia. We had some big races that yeah. they weren't expected to be in there, right? And so it was like a new beginning that I think took a lot of people off their axis. And that's why, again, I have to look at it from a resilience standpoint because I think mm-hmm. we're going to continue to see a lot of that. But I think 2017 was the beginning of uh, a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It seems, and, you know, I could be wrong. Like, you know, we're in this technology age, and so information gets passed around, and we know stuff instantly more than we've ever known. Um, But it just, uh, God, there's so much going on on the planet. Like I said, I'm not going to categorize it as good or bad, just experiences, things are happening, and, um, you know, natural disasters um, with the uh, terrorist groups. And, and so I can't tell sometimes if, guys, it's just this year has just been way more than the years past, or is it just information is just, just spread more and it's just in our faces, but it's always been going on as much as it has ever been. Yeah, from a, from a technological standpoint, uh, Neil, what's his name? Um, Neil... The grass. What's his name? The, yeah, the grass. Oh my goodness! If we ever meet him or have him on the podcast, I will make sure I get, I pronounce yeah, it yeah, correct. That one, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got me about the astronomer, right? The astronomer. What's that? Yeah, yeah he's, and he said a really good point. You know, people were like, "Is it better today than it was in the past?" And you know, some people, <clears throat> excuse me, look at the past with um, with rose-colored glasses, like it was so much better. And, mm-hmm. and so Dr. Neal had mentioned that it's better in 2017 from an aspect that there's a greater awareness of things that went on. Uh, mm-hmm. For instance, when, uh, you know, especially last year, last year there were a lot of uh, police brutality issues that was yeah. brought out on a global scale. And so from a technological standpoint, Dr. Neal had mentioned you know, a generation ago, we didn't hear about it. You know, a lot of it was swept under the rug. And yeah. so, you know, I think that was from 2016, it was more of a racial issue. And then from 2017, it seemed like it was more of a gender issue. Like there was more women's issues. There was a lot of upheaval in uh, the status quo from a patriarchal patriarchal standpoint, a lot of uh, rocks of Gibraltar, if you will, especially in entertainment were 
you just see every day or every week you're just sitting to wait and expect, like, I didn't expect this person was doing this, you know, mm. and you had a lot yeah. of that in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, we've talked about it you know, many times off air, and you're texting me, oh, I can't believe this person now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely it's just, you know. <laughs> uh, you know what I think is really funny about that? I mean, it's funny and it's scary at the same time because, you know, last night there was this, this big award ceremony, lifetime award ceremony with Lionel Richie and, and, and LL Cool J and Norm Lear and all these dignitaries, right? Le- yesterday, I mean, it was filmed maybe a month ago. But today trending was Lionel Richie. And the first thing I thought was somebody had come out and said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. we're automatically think like, especially if you hear uh, a, a, tre- a, a treasure, a national treasure, Right, like somebody's going to undo that person with skeletons that happened twenty, thirty years ago. Yeah. No. So thankfully, right. when I when I clicked on it, I was kind of hesitant, but when I clicked on it, 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 it was none of that. So we didn't no. have to worry about Lionel Richie back in like nineteen eighty four doing something that he he <laughs> progressed as an elder statesman. So, <laughs> well, you're safe for now. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, why, why don't we see this down? And what's the world come to? <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Now, that, that's, I think what you just said is really interesting from 2017, right? Because, you know, for the last 10 to 15 years, we, we've seen this, this huge push for, like, reality TV and, uh, you know, anyone could have their 15 minutes of fame. And before that, you know, these celebrities were just put on a pedestal like they could do no wrong and they were perfect people. And so, you know, when you have all this stuff happening this past year, you know, the, like I said, Rocks of Gibraltar, I mean, these are giants in the industry, great yeah. movies, great, you know, great actors, but we had to differentiate the persona that they personified on screen versus who they were in real life. In real life, yeah. No, completely agree. You know, sometimes we get caught up in those those uh those personas, you know, that get, you know, played out and on screen and whatnot and forget it, you know. <laughs> They're human too and you know, it's just like all humans probably have a few skeletons somewhere. And um you know, and for them it gets played out in the public and whatnot and uh yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing that, that's been really big this past year with that upheaval, especially in Hollywood, it'll be interesting, like you said, uh, with 2018, you know, maybe 2017 was more from an entertainment standpoint. So the pushback was, well, there's just as much going on in the political spectrum. How come these guys aren't aren't being recognized, right? So it'd be interesting to see if, if we get a wave of that in 2018. But what what I found as far as looking back on 2017 with that happening in, in entertainment and such is the – and, you know, in, in public, let's just say the public persona, was that 2017 is a very – you know, I mentioned 2012 was a different time for a lot of people. But if you go back 20, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, the environment was so different than it is today. You know, we were riding to the the intrinsic, I mean, not the intrinsic motivation, but the intenders holiday uh, luncheon last week. And Joanne had brought up a really good point that, you know, women, it was going on, yes, but women didn't feel like it was a safe enough environment to actually come out. You know, there yeah. were more women that probably would have thrown these other women under the under the bus you know, and and they wouldn't have had that support system that they have in 2018 or 2017. So I think it's important to kind of look at both aspects, right, the the environment that was allowed to go on. You know, we may or may not have taken part of it on different levels, but it's definitely not the environment of 2017, that's for sure. Yeah, Yeah, definitely agree with that. Did you – and not that – I don't want to, you know, say any uh, better or worse than any other guests, but did you have any uh, favorite uh, interview that we did in 2017? Well, I, I do want to say two things. One, my favorite one was our, 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 
our first, I think it was our, our first one was napping, right? Yeah, so the napping. second one was about um, God winks. And it was just really interesting that before we had talked about it, I thought it was just a, a, a book that had come out in 2002. But once we start peeling back that onion, there was a newer version and all. And it was just really, really fascinating for me, for everyone that we had spoken with, connecting the dots. And sometimes they didn't see it, but if either questions you asked or I asked, we saw that a lot of people's lives weren't linear, even though that was how we were taught to live and grow. But yeah. due to their different circumstances, it led them to where they are today. And for many of them, they were really surprised and really happy in the place they were, albeit that they may have gone through some, you know, some curves or some, uh, a lot of changes in their life that they weren't expecting. So uh, from that aspect, I appreciated all of them, but I think it all kind of goes back to that God winks and appreciating the synchronicities that we have in our lives or appreciating, because I think it's really hard for us to see the synchronicities, but when we can see it in other people and then we get, because people bring it to our attention. Yeah. Right. Like, wow, mm -hmm. I didn't even, wow. Like even the in, in tenders meeting where we don't say the same intentions every week, but six months later it, it may happen. And, and that person forgot all about it. And we're like, Oh, you remember you had that as an intention? Yeah, exactly. Kind of interesting how those, you know, sometimes you want, that intention, you know, yesterday or whatever, right away. But there's always an expression. Everything happens on its own time frame. Sometimes you just got to be patient. And it's hard sometimes because you really want that. But um, then after it manifests or, you know, whatnot, and then, you'll, then you can kind of see the bigger picture and say, oh, okay, you know what, actually getting it right now is the perfect time, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm actually putting my foot in my mouth because I, I said that 2017, I looked at it as a year of resilience. But, right, based off of what you just said, it happens when it's supposed to. And, and I know for me and others, you know, we really try to push the envelope as far as we see. But there is a greater picture that happens outside of us. And when yeah. we sit back and kind of ride the wave, you know, it's, it's easier. I think it's easier for us when it happens, like you mentioned. But even in Abraham's and Wayne Dyer and, and others have said, I need to believe it to see it instead of I need to see it to believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well said. <laughs> well, for me, I enjoy, I mean, I'll admit that there might have been a few interviews where going into it, I'm thinking, well, I'm not necessarily overly interested in this particular topic, but... I learned a long time ago, like, hey, have an open mind because you'll probably learn something. And I can honestly say every interview we did, I, I learned something that I didn't know. And I was, afterwards, I was like, wow, that was great. I'm glad, you know, glad we did that one. So everyone, you know, has something, bring something to the day table and has something to offer. And if you're, um, you know, patient and listen, you're probably going to learn something and find out something interesting. So, yeah. Does any one podcast stand out over the other in that instance? Um, probably, let's see. i, I got to remember them all. <laughs> 40 of them. I don't know if I can even tell you all 40. Um, probably, I like the one, uh, what was that guy's name? The, um, he was, he, what was it? I think it was Paul. He was a friend of your vets. What's that guy's name, Paul? Um, oh, the, can, shaman, the shaman? Yeah. No. I, I kind of I like that one. I just like listening to that story where he went off, you know, into the, the nature for a week and fasted and all the different things. I think I had asked him if he did any, you know, nature spirit runs or or vision quests or something. And then he, and then he went on and kind of told that story where he'd go off, you know, and fasted for no water, no food, I think, too, is what he said. And, and people think, how can you go for a week with no water? <laughs> but, um, you know, he talked about, you know, the experience. And um, Native American stuff always resonated with me. I've had a lot of, you know, past lives as Native American. So, um, so that one, for whatever reason, really uh, kind of resonated with me. I think he had yeah. mentioned that he kept a pebble 
under his tongue, and that was exactly. providing yeah. enough saliva or liquid for him during that exactly. time. So. <laughs> and that was about it, yeah. And then him talking about how the wolves, the wolves came and just would sit by and just kind of watch him when he had a fire. I think he mentioned that. Just come and just kind of sit there and just watch him and look at him or whatever. Those wolves would show up. And, um, yeah, that was – I really liked that one. <laughs> but like I yeah, said, they were all awesome. – he and uh, Yvette, and something that happened, he was under the weather, so right after our podcast, he had gotten really sick, and so he, they didn't have their event. So he actually rescheduled it for April and wanted to come back on the podcast when that happens, and you know maybe we'll go, we'll get invited out to their, to their event, because I'm sure it's going to be a blast, especially if, if it had that big of an impact on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Was that the... Oh, Okay. Okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah. I didn't realize he got sick. Wow. Yeah, it was it was it was good because the not good that he was sick, but we were right before that we were talking about synchronicity and before we were to scheduled to have a meeting with him, we were going to in their workshop is Nature Secret. So people listening that's actually podcast podcast 26. And Yvette had just started her polarity balancing business and we were going to have her on. And, you know, at the time she wasn't really ready. It was going to be her first interview, just coming out to the public to let her know, let everybody know about her business. And we kind of did the nature secret workshop first so she can kind of get a feel of it. And it was, it, it was great because she actually got to sit with him and, and see how it goes. So she felt so much more comfortable and it seemed like she was a pro when she, when it got time for her to do the podcast on her own with us. So yeah. you never know at the time. I always love how I kind of laugh at the end of each day because I'll have a, a, a large list of things to do or things I want to do. And sometimes you could probably tell like when, when you call and I'm like in the middle of something and then it's just funny at the end of the day, like there's something that I totally did not plan that turned out to be the best thing for me that day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. We get a lot of – you hear people talking a lot about the millennials and all they're entitled and, you know, their work ethic and just this, that, and whatever millennials – do you think any of that's really true, or maybe they're just bringing something to the table that's new, and old school people, we just, you know, we're old school, and we're set in our ways? I look at it as uh, millennials are actually going to be, the, like you said, the old line now, because in 2017, you, I didn't hear it before 2017, but I really started hearing about Generation Z. Right, so Generation Z is the generation after millennials, and to kind of go into what you're saying, I'm, I'm Generation X, and so what we looked at, you know, I came up during like the dot com boom, and during the dot com boom, there were you know people my age that wanted to change things from their parents' lives, like if we were latchkey kids. We wanted to be able to bring your child to work, and you know there was childcare issues or daycare at work because that was something that we saw that we wanted to change from from the generation before us. And uh -huh. so I think millennials is the same thing where we maybe Generation X was like, I I don't want my kid to I want my kid to have everything I didn't have, right? And this person's a angel, and this person's a princess. Right. And so the pendulum swung to the other end of the spectrum where up until maybe high school, this per child felt that they walked on water. But then when they got to high school or college and they saw the real world, they're like, wow, <laughs> everybody doesn't cater to me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what, yeah, the whole world doesn't think I'm a princess like my dad thinks I am. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the whole world was on board with me being a princess. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so, you know, I, I, I like it because, you know, I, I would never, there's always that, uh, I, I love my uncles, right, because 
I would use it from a music standpoint, especially since it's a homie's perspective podcast, right? When I grew up listening to the hip-hop, right? And, hey, Joanne, how's it going? Hi. Hi, Anza. And so uh, we're actually blessed with uh, Joanne Wilson, who was on our earlier one of our earlier podcasts earlier this year. Uh, she, I met her at the Horizon Center, of Intu- uh, Horizon Center of Intuitive Awareness, and David, of course, is her son. We make a lot of reference to her. So uh, welcome to the podcast, Joanne. Thank you. Yeah, we're just kind of going over uh, 2017 and, and what we've seen uh, from a homie's perspective and, you know, what has changed over the years. And, and right now we're talking about uh, generation gaps if you will. So we're talking about uh, 2017 was the first year that I first started hearing about Generation Z. So there hasn't been that big a push of millennials as much as previous years. So it's just showing the natural progression that we have through generations. And so David and I were talking about, you know, some things, the differences, not uh, pointing them as kind of like the evil, who are these people, who do they think they are? Because I think that happens in every generation. So, you know, we, so David, I was talking about like hip hop, right? And so when I was listening to that, outside of my parents, like turn that music down and stuff, you know, my uncles would put me in a headlock and all. And they would say, oh, you know, this, that's nothing, but they just sampled Cool in the Gang or what have you. And so that kind of changed my whole perspective on the music because it was great. It was like uh, older generations showing how these, gen- these how we coexist, and it actually helped me appreciate other genres of music. I started listening to classical music, jazz, everything else, just because of them not pushing me to the side of, oh, you Generation Xers, who do you think you are? Oh, yeah. Right. So I think that's yeah. probably why I wouldn't look at a millennial or Generation Z in the coming years, you know, as harshly as maybe some of my contemporaries would. I would, yeah, totally understand. So one of the, Joanne, one of the questions that we had asked when we first started was, well, Hamza asked me, well, what did you think about your take on 20, you know, 2017? And what I said was, wow. <laughs> so I mean, it came out of my mouth was just, wow, it's just been a, a, just a wild year. And then Hamza kind of gave his take. What about you? What was, what's your take on 2017? Well, I would have the same expression, David. I would say it was wow with the two or three exclamation points <laughs> after it. And so uh, I, I've I've kind of mellowed a bit near the end because I truly do believe there are no accidents and all these things are for a reason. Even if I can't figure out what the darn reason is, I know there's a reason for this. It's to move us to a certain place, to be in a certain place for certain events or energies. So I accept that even if I don't know what it is. I accept Are you that. on a speaker, Please. Joanne? It sounds like you're very far away. Okay. Uh, what can I do about that? I have you on speakerphone. Should I take uh, you Oh, that's why. Yeah, we can tell, yeah. If you okay, have a headset I'll or something, um, yeah. Okay. Is that better? Oh, yeah. A million times better. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So at any rate, I, I, you know, I agree. It's been a while of a year, and uh, I know there's a purpose for all this, and I can't wait until it's fully disclosed what the purpose for all this turmoil and uh, whatever is happening, happening, what the purpose is. I don't know what it is, but... I hope to find out soon. I'm curious, actually, probably more than anything. I'm curious. It's really interesting when you say that, Joanne, because it makes me think of the uh, veil of forgetfulness, right, when you incarnate. Before you incarnate, you pretty much see the bigger picture. And and David and I were talking about um, earlier, I looked at 2017 initially as resilient, like, wow, you know, we could say wow, but it's 2017 and 2017 is over, like we made it through it. And then the other part of me was we were looking at, like you said, there's no accident. So we were looking at all the synchronicities that have happened because of it. And so when we had the veil of forgetfulness, it's like, are you sure that you signed up to do all this? 
<laughs> I know. But we didn't read the fine print or something, but apparently didn't we read signed the fine it. Print. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, that is a great question. Are you sure? And you know what? I, I'm not sure, but we'll see. <laughs> There's still uh, a little bit left. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. One thing that so, was one thing that I, I do want to bring up uh, during the call is uh, we're talking about uh, you know what's happening in media and such. So I, I definitely want to talk about some movies and some TV shows and all. And over this little break, you know, I was able to walk, step away from the computer, go figure. And I saw the movie Coco. And I don't know if you have any of you seen that movie. I no, I, I have not. I have not. I really enjoyed it, but, you know, but I have not seen it. It's really good, and I really – it's funny, you know, intrinsic motivation from a homie's perspective to be talking about a Disney movie. But I wanted to bring it up on the podcast for listeners because I think it was, re- I think it was huge from a, um, from a global standpoint. I mean, it's been a global phenomenon, a number one movie or, since it was released, I think, two months ago. And they're talking about the gist of the movie without giving it away is about ancestor worship or uh, respect for your ancestors. And there's so much that we don't pay attention to when we're saying the veil of forgetfulness that our ancestors are always there around us to guide us. And we're walking around like we're the only people in the world, like this is only happening to me. And if there's synchronicity that exists and there's no accidents, then there's no accidents that we have a a big support structure that we may or may not acknowledge. So I like to publicly acknowledge my ancestors for getting me through 2017. (laughs) You're giving them all the credit. All the credit, yeah. Because when I try to do it on my own, it's very limited results. But when I let go and I'm like, I'll allow some help, yeah, it takes me a lot better circumstances than I can even imagine. Yeah, I just kind of surrendered to it, yeah. Well, there's a lot to be said for surrendering. Yeah. You know, I said there's a lot to be said about it, and I can't think of anything that you've said about it, but I know there's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, David was talking earlier about, like, we've had a – looking at Google Trends, uh, the beautiful thing of 2017 again with tech, we were, David and I were talking about technology earlier. You know, we before you know a decade ago or 20 years ago, we had to wait till you know the actual end of the year and wait for ABC and the major television stations to give us a year in review, and they would you know obviously like most people we they would filter it to what they felt was important to them. And the good thing about, like, Google Trends is they actually show data of what people are looking at globally. And the number one search for this year was Hurricane Irma. And it was followed by the other hurricanes for this year. So it was just huge that, you know, we've had hurricane on top of hurricane this year. It was the first time in, I want to say, what, 10, 10 to 12 years? that we've had a lot of uh, upheaval from a, a nature standpoint. So I'm sure it, it, I wanted to get you guys take of the ongoing argument of the global warming versus, no, this just happens. It was an anomaly. What, what do you guys think about that? Mm, you know, I'm kind of, kind of in the middle. I'm not quite, I mean, there's part of me that says, you know, it's cyclical. You know, that the planet just does this. And I have great respect for Mother Earth. And the way I kind of see it is she'll take care of herself. And when she needs to kind of put her foot down, she will. And, and it seems like she always wins out <laughs> over humans. At some point, sooner or later, she gets her way. So I don't know. I don't know if it's actual warming or if this is, maybe it is, but maybe, like I said, maybe it's cyclical. Maybe it's supposed to be happening. And who knows? The planet's been around for billions of years. This might have gone through this many a time, you know. I don't know. Well, I, what do you I, think, well, I agree with David to some extent. And uh, it was time for Mother Earth to say, okay, you know, I've had enough of this. 
However, a part of me believes that it's not all Mother Nature, that there are uh, people, groups, governments, or I don't know who, who are manipulating some of this. I, I felt that the, those hurricanes were greatly manipulated because they would go offshore and come back in and go off. They did things they never done before. And it was almost like someone uh, at the controls trying to see, okay, how, what can we do? How far can we go? How much, you know, control over a hurricane do we have? And, uh, you know, and knowing how the thing, things are in the world, it could be play for future, uh, okay, can this be a tool that works uh, in a war? Can we, like, you know, instead of going over with guns and bombs can we send hurricanes over and can we destroy enough you know so i i really a part of me <laughs> is a part of me that really believes that that it's not mm. just uh the weather you know mm. that so, someone has their hand in it somewhere mm. well, along those lines joanne uh, the follow-up would be a, a number a number five on the global news of searches that people were looking for in 2017 was the solar eclipse. So, you know, people were scrambling around to get the glasses and going on. It was the first time that it, it was this nice path that went across the United States, and that, that's not scheduled to happen again for another seven years. So what was your take on the, the all of the uh, euphoria or hysteria, depending on who you are? around the solar eclipse? I was quite surprised uh, the amount of interest in that, where people were willing to get in an automobile and drive for miles or fly for miles, like my nephew flew in from Colorado to Tennessee and his family just for that. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty pretty heavy to you know, travel that far to see an eclipse. So I was amazed at that. Uh, that, that there was that kind of interest in it. And, um, yeah, I, I think mostly it was my amazement of the interest in, that people had in that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what you felt, David. Well, it seems, I don't know when the last time, that was like a full solar eclipse, right? Is that what that was? Yes. Yes. And so I don't remember, have we had one of those in our lifetime before or no? I think so. Yes, I, okay. I, you know, astrology is not my thing, uh, ast astronomy rather, but um, I think so. We had had yeah. it before, and yeah. I don't I think, think it had the interest that this one had. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And I don't know why this one had. Obviously, we're in an age where me and Hams were talking about earlier. Just information, just everything, just gets out there so fast now, and so maybe in years past. People just, I don't know, just for whatever reason, this one around, it's like everyone, you know, it was, they kept talking about it and everyone had an interest in wanting to see it like we've never seen in the past, like, you know, everywhere. And people wanted to really watch this thing. And it's like, wow, even the day that it happened, you know, when I was at work, everywhere I went, you see all these, you know, little parties. People would get out in the parking lot and have all their chairs and all these businesses. Everyone seemed to be have an interest in it. Yes, I think you're right. The information age has certainly contributed to that, and in that sense, it's it's good and it's fun. Whereas before, it was like you know, just uh, not as well known, and the information mm -hmm. wasn't out there as much. So I think that's part of it, and I think that's always good. Uh, mm -hmm. What do now, you think, the, Hamza? Well, this kind of goes to my next question or my next point because you know we're looking at the the past year as a whole, but. You know, I'd be remiss if I don't speak about last week. So last week was over the weekend was just so phenomenal that, I mean, it's too early to know. I mean, I know it's going to be a top search probably for 2018, right? It's kind of hard when things happen in December. They kind of, you know, lose. They don't have the aggregate information. Um, but they had that, you know, <laughs> they didn't put it out, a press release or any of information publicly that SpaceX was going to launch a rocket in Los Angeles. And you had celebrities and people 
all over LA stop in the middle of the highway and film on Facebook and Instagram and all over social media what they thought was a UFO in the middle of the skyline in, in LA. And oh, so it's wow. huge. I missed that. I oh, my goodness. That. I wanted to bring it up because I didn't know if you guys heard it or not. It was just no. everything stopped. It was like, is, are we being visited right now? And, and, and SpaceX had a little blurb on their site, but something that phenomenal that people didn't know about, it was really unnerving to some people. There was a little bit of panic. And, you know, thankfully with the web, things happen kind of quickly, whereas if it was like 20 years ago, maybe, you know, <laughs> Who knows what it could have happened? It, people may have thought that we were being visited. Yeah, that's what that was. I mean, I remember seeing a little blip. I wasn't quite quite sure what was going on. I was like, okay, someone saw a UFO or something. But you're saying SpaceX launched the what did you say a satellite? Yeah, or no, SpaceX, which is the company that Elon Musk or Elon Musk owns, and yeah. yes, they had a, a rocket uh, test that okay. had launched on Saturday night, but in the middle of the night, just like, you know, if Joanne kind of opened the, the, the can of worms when she talked about manipulating the weather, right? So we can wear our temple hats a little bit for the podcast, right? But you could say the same thing happened in 47 when, when we first had our sighting, right? Yeah. Everyone didn't know at the time, what was it? You know, what, <laughs> what's going on? It wasn't military that did this. How come they yeah. didn't let us know they were doing tests at the time? You know, well, okay. it, it was the 2017 version of that. Yeah. Well, because they weren't, my opinion is, even though I didn't see it, is that they were not doing tests at that time. But that's the what they had to put out there. I have been expecting, uh, you know, I, I'm hoping that uh, the... Uh, aliens or whatever will come forth in my lifetime i want i want to be here i want to experience that and i fully expect it to happen pretty soon <laughs> so i don't know how i missed that one uh because mm-hmm. i certainly would have thought that okay they're 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 showing themselves now and uh if the government or whoever did it didn't put anything out there before because they didn't know before until it happened and the uh, that's probably a bit of a cover up. Uh, you know, I'm you know, I'm kind of from that from that group that believes in all that, so conspiracy <laughs> theorist. Right. Well let's let's we can stay on the tinfoil hat a little bit because twenty seventeen just had like you guys mentioned, there was a lot of wow. Uh but it was really I think it was really good that we didn't it we we're getting bombarded with so much information. There was a term that I, I had never heard before, but in 2017, there was a term being thrown around called digital mm. dementia. And what that oh, yes. meant was, you've heard, right? And yes, I have. They're actually, you're getting, I think it's huge. You're, you're being, your brain cannot process all of this information. And if it's so wow, you're being, you're being reactive to, not you, but I'm just saying most people are being reactive to a lot of the information mm-hmm. that's out there that you're like, okay, well, well, what's next? I'm just like, before you had got, had come on, we had talked a little bit about uh, what was happening in Hollywood was, you know, a lot of men stepping down in the environment that they were in. And it was like, they were allowed to do that from some time. Right. And yes, in 2017, that's just not allowed for a long time, right? And women kind of went along with it. And women that wanted yes. to come out before didn't feel like they were being supported or in an environment in which they could. And so, you know, 2017, they were allowed to do that. But so last night there was a big award with um, Lionel Richie was on, LL Cool J, Norm Lear, you know, all these dignitaries, right? And then on the news mm-hmm. or on the web today, the number one search was Lionel Richie. And the first thing right. I thought, because of 2017, was, oh, wow, somebody's come out and <laughs> said something about Lionel Richie. You know, and I just think with digital dementia, there's so much going on that you can't even remember what happened in March, April, May. You know, there's just <laughs> so much. Yeah. You're, you can barely keep up with the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Let them know. <laughs> yeah. Any eventful year, that's for sure. Uh well, that, that that's all true, and I did see this show, and uh, it, it, it was a great show. 
But, you know, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just don't know. I mean, I have my theories, and I, they're, they're so far uh, away from what the world knows that I'm even hesitant to even say them because I will sound like a quack. <laughs> David, will, he's always giving me a hard time. Are you still watching all those videos and things? But, yeah, I would sound like a quack, but I do believe most of them. And I do believe that uh, they're, they're, they'll be here. They are here, and they will show themselves. Uh, prob- I, I think in the next year, 2018, we'll see some more evidence of it. And, and it won't, they won't be able to say, uh, oh, yeah, that's me just testing this or testing that, uh, covering it up. They won't be able to cover it up. They won't be able to get to it fast enough to cover it up. Mm. So that's your, one of your 2018 predictions? That's my 2018 prediction. All right. Wow. The, uh, uh, They're going to come out of the closet. Aliens coming out of the closet. Coming out of the closet, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that in December 2018. We better get some documentation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I'm willing to be wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I think it, I, it, in my little tinfoil hat scenario, I'm thinking that we're going to be pleasant or surprised because there's going to be a lot of people, i.e. neighbors and such, that were like, oh, yeah, and they come out at her skin, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah. we were always around you. It, it, it just, You know, there's an argument, since we're doing a homie's perspective, right? Like, you hear that argument with uh, in the African-American community of, oh, this is me at work versus this is me at home, you know? Or, or even in the election, it was like, oh, this is me. This is my Facebook profile, but this is how I really feel when I vote, right? We saw a uh-huh. lot of that this year, people actually coming out like this is how I really feel instead of uh, a persona that I or, you know, an image that I put out that wasn't maybe a part of me, but only like 5% of it. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, that's interesting. Right. Yeah. Uh, I bring that up because the number three search for the global news, it, 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 it's a paradox because David had mentioned earlier in the podcast, I don't know if you were on yet, Joanne, but he had mentioned the weather and we covered that and he said terrorist attack. And that was a trigger because the number three search was the Las Vegas shooting. Now, the reason why I say it was a trigger because in, for the first time, since what happened in 2001, I don't want to say the, the date because it's a trigger and I don't want it to come out on the filters when we post it on YouTube, but what happened in 2001, um, there's been this, this perception that uh, any attacks were foreigners that don't look like us, they may be from the Middle East and so on and so forth. But there's been data that the majority of attacks have been homegrown from people from your average American Joe public, and the Las Vegas shooting is the number three search, and it wasn't a foreign attack. That was a homegrown person. Right, it yeah. was. So, what do, what do you what do you guys take on that? Well, I, I, you know, I think they don't want. Uh, who would want the public to know that our own people, our own Americans, are attacking us? They don't want us to know that. They want us to think that it's uh, from outside the United States. You know, I mean, just think of what that means, that all these things were homegrown. But one of the most interesting things that I saw on um, television once when they were talking about the uh, towers coming down was that the charges were placed there during construction, that they had to be. They couldn't just go in there and plant bombs or whatever in different places in that building on different floors and so forth. It had it had to be in place during construction, and that's that. I find that uh, if if there if there's truth in that, I find that pretty disturbing that mm-hmm. they were planted ahead of time. Now, one justification could be that well, one day. You know, like most buildings in this country, we'll want to tear it down and replace it, right? So rather than have to tear it down at that time, let's go ahead and put the charges in now so when it comes time to tear it down, it'll be easy to do. That could be a justification for that, but I don't think so. 
<laughs> and I know that's pretty far out, too. I'm getting really way out there, aren't I? You really are. I don't usually see this <laughs> out of you. We might have to have you as a regular guest. I like this. <laughs> There's a pot, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, clo- I'm closing my blinds as we speak. <laughs> you are an honorary homie, for real. <laughs> Maybe we can have a special, like, uh, out there segment, you know, for every you know, podcast we do when we get Joanne on with her out there, uh, you know, segment and view on something. <laughs> well, we're laughing because, you know, in the 60s when, when the Jetsons were out, and, and people were looking at, I can call you and I can see you at your home and all that. That was far out back then. It was yeah. far and out. So when you're, Joanne, you're saying some of these things, uh, right? Who's to say in 2018 that this doesn't transpire or it's soon thereafter? So, you know, we're living in an age where, you know, we have so much access to things that we can only imagine. And obviously, we're not going to just stop here. It's going to it's going to be so much more that we haven't even anticipated. You know, Lois yeah. and I were, were thinking back to when we were kids in Detroit, which is in the 40s. It's a long time ago, and we used to read the funny papers. My my, we would pile in bed with my parents on Sunday, and my dad would read the comics to us. And the most fun thing of all was Dick Tracy because he had this wristwatch with the TV in it. <laughs> And so when he talked to someone on his wristwatch in the 40s, mind you, he could see their face and they could see his. And we used to think, wow, you know, yeah. that was so, so, uh, you know, far out there that you could hardly even believe it was possible. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's a lot of things. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Um, one thing, it, it's been out since 2000. Nine, I believe, but it really got a lot of traction in 2017, and the number two search for global news outside of Hurricane Irma was Bitcoin, and oh, it Bitcoin, had gone yes. from nerds in their basement somewhere to your neighbor talking about it at a barbecue, so it is definitely in the public consciousness. What do you guys think about the disruption of our currency with Bitcoin? Well, well, I think, you know, uh, I think a disruption of some kind uh, was and is inevitable. The fact that it's Bitcoin uh, is a bit of a surprise, and I, I've been trying to read up on Bitcoin, and I tell you I still don't really understand it and understand why I need it or any of that at this point. So probably by the time I figure that out, it'll be too late, but... Uh, <laughs> There has been a need for a change. So here we go. Someone said, hey, how about this? So uh, I, I, I find it amazing and that uh, it's probably overdue. I mean, our whole monetary system is just terrible. Not only that, Indeed, it's not David. even ours. We don't, you know, someone else owns it. Someone That's else right. owns the Federal Reserve. Can you? When I finally heard that in my lifetime, I could hardly believe that. So, what do you mean someone else owns it? That our government wow. didn't own it. Right. Oh my goodness, we're going to definitely have you on for conspiracy talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm sitting here in my space helmet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, all, all I know, all I know is in regards to the Bitcoin is Darren McFadden. You know who he is, right, uh, Hamza? Yes. Okay. He's played for the Raiders and he played for the Cowboys. I just read a, an article yesterday that last year he gave his manager three million dollars to invest in Bitcoin, to buy some Bitcoin. And this manager of his was a family friend. Well, the manager didn't do that, took the money and spent it and whatever. If he would have did that, that $3 million would be worth $127 million right now. Wow. I think we're going we're gonna to have a lot of those. Oh, I wish I would have invested in Starbucks yeah. when they first opened. You know, yeah, I think well, I mean, I think that he, he had that manager kind of screwed him over, but it's just like, wow, <laughs> three million. He was willing to invest, 
would have paid off, but yeah, the guy didn't do that. He just went ahead. The problem with that is just he gave the guy power of attorney, which was a huge mistake, and he, you know, went and spent all the money on his own personal lifestyle and didn't invest any of it. And um, oh well. <laughs> yeah. One thing that we were talking mistake. about. One thing that we were talking about, Joanne, before you had come on was uh, we obviously <laughs> had to throw in Abraham as we usually do. And we were just talking about um, the saying, I need to see it to believe it versus I need to believe it to see it. And so, you know, I think Bitcoin falls into that category or the situation that happened with Darren McFadden or Joanne seeing aliens or any of this. It's more of I can't believe it if I don't see it. And there has to be some level of faith in whatever it is. To before the masses see it, because when the masses see it, and this is this is just my interpretation of Bitcoin, it's it's too late now, right? Like it's retail. It's when people were talking about it, and it was kind of a huckster thing. That those were the people that made the money. You know now. Yeah. Well, more. yes, that may be true, but you had to be careful with that point of view, because there's probably a time when people said, "Well, it's too late for this," or "Too late to," you know, when houses got up to a hundred thousand, someone said, "Well, it's too late now." You know, houses at a hundred thousand, it's too late for me to buy a house. I should have bought a house when it was forty thousand. But so mm-hmm. you don't want to fall into that trap of it's too late because it might be too late. My phone is dying. I'm going to switch phones. Can you hear me? Yeah. It might be too late, but it might not be too late. Conversely, I've heard people say that uh, when the when the monetary system changes, Bitcoin will, will be a bust. So, you know, you have to be careful who you listen to. But I also know that thinking that it's too late to do certain things is, uh, I think uh, that's a bit of a, a, a trap, and you have to be careful not to fall into that. Because who, okay. who would, you know, my first house I paid what sixteen thousand dollars for it, and it's probably worth four fifty now, yeah. four hundred fifty thousand. So I never would have dreamed. So we have to be, you have to be careful with that. The voice of reason, the voice of reason on top of the 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 uh, tinfoil hat. We love it. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. So one thing in, in closing that I like, because I like both of you guys to do it, um, one thing that I learned some time ago was uh, traditionally people look at, oh, the end of the year, and oh my goodness, what does 2018 have to offer? And I, I'm setting myself up for that, and that's fantastic. Oh, and I still do that, but the other side of it that I really like is what I really appreciated of how far I've come in this year. And I like you to do two things, starting with Joanne, because uh, I'm always traverse, right? So for all the ladies <laughs> listening, so if you could talk about what you appreciate for this year, and then outside of the aliens, what, what are you looking forward to? In okay, so don't bring the aliens to this. Okay, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what do I appreciate most about this year? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Well. I've learned so much this year, and I, I do have to thank the intenders for uh, some of that knowledge coming through. But what I've learned the most this year is the importance of gratitude. It is so important. Being grateful for where you are and what you have. Uh, that's probably one of my number one lessons, being grateful. and. Now I try every night when I'm laying in bed, uh, you know, name five things I'm grateful for. And when I wake up, name five things I'm grateful for. Uh, So I would say being grateful is the biggest thing that I've learned this year. Mm. I always knew it, but I, I, I always knew it, but I really knew it now. What am I looking forward to? In 2018. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. What are you looking forward to in 2018? Besides the aliens? Besides the Landing? aliens. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having more love in my life. You know, being able to see where the love is. Sometimes we, we uh, you know, we kind of put love in a box and, and limit it. 
but I've tried to open that up and uh, find love just in the the little things, you know. I, I went to Awful House the other day, and, uh, you know, all the number of people who said Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to me, just, you know, people that I wouldn't expect if you just judged them by their looks, you know, you say, oh, that guy. And probably wishes I weren't even in here, but no, it's you know this person says happy holidays, merry Christmas. So uh, I'm looking for forward to a lot of love in the world and being a part of it. David, well, for me, 2017, well, kind of on the same lines with the gratitude, especially within the with the last like month. It seems like the just a lot with gratitude and um, learn a lot about being patient and letting, you know, how you say just let everything kind of happen on its own momentum and everything happens at the right time when it's supposed to. And that's sometimes that's hard, but I learned a lot about that in, in, in 2017. And for 2018, I'm looking forward to um, fulfilling and being more aware of my purpose um, in life. I mean, I, I know a lot about what, but even more, even more, and and you know, expressing that and fulfilling fulfilling that purpose. It gets more and more clear. I've just been kind of hiding and being shy about it, but it's like it's been kind of knocking me upside the head. And it's like, come on, you just can't sit on the sidelines and just keep watching. You're going to have to get out there and play a little bit. So I want to, you know, try to step out there and not, you know, hiding behind the bush like I have been. Mm. And, yeah. What about you? Yeah, I think that looking at 2017, I think we're three for three. I have to express the importance of gratitude and um, and also a sense of humor and not taking things so yep. seriously. Yep. Um, you yep. guys were talking a lot, a lot of wows, and there was a lot of um, moments that we can kind of look back of and, and find the humor in it. And I think that's what, especially for me, that I think that made me shine, you know, not taking myself so seriously. So, you know, I think that having that sense of humor and gratitude will set me up for 2018. And before you had come on, Joanne, we were talking about a little bit about numerology and that 2016 was uh, the year of nine, which was ending in completion. And with all this, wow, 2017 was definitely a year of new beginnings. And I think keeping along that theme for me for 2018 is going to be a definite year of number two, which is partnerships. So I see aligning with, with other people, like David saying, get out, getting out of the shadows or no man is an island. I think that there's going to be more partnerships that we can't imagine right now and just being open to it to take us to a, a fruitful 2018. Yeah. That sounds yeah. awesome, Hansa. Sounds good. Yeah. Maybe, so, we can uh, even get you, uh, maybe we can even get you up on stage and go see you do a little bit of comedy. You know what? A lot of people have been asking me, and that's a Facebook algorithm thing where they'll post things that happened like a year or two ago, and a lot of people that hadn't seen my comedy were like, yo, when are you getting back? So maybe 2018 will, will be the year. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that, was, that was fit. create a tour. <laughs> even tour. better. I'll, even better. I'll, and maybe I'll headline for the alien. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> standing room only for sure for sure uh, it was a pleasure I, I didn't expect you to be on Joanne it was it was it was fantastic I, I was glad that we were able to have you on our last podcast for 2017 well thank you um, so for allowing you me to jump in there uh, a little bit late I appreciate that you were here at the right time as always and, yeah. and with that this is Intrinsic Motivation 2017 from a homie's perspective. This is Hamza. And I'm David. And, and I'm Joanne. To, and you are Joanne, our, our resident <laughs> tinfoil hat lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look, here's to many more. Uh, we're looking forward to a fruitful 2018, and, and we hope that 
uh, the current listeners will stay with us, and we look forward to all the new people that we'll meet in our travels. Uh, with yes. that, we are signing off. All righty. Cheers, guys. 2018. Take care. See you in 2018. All righty. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homies Perspective podcast. Please check us out on our website at intrinsicmotivation.life where you can click on the speak pipe button and leave any suggestions for a future podcast that you'd like us to cover. Also check us out on our social media sites. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook page, iTunes podcast, in addition to Stitcher and Google Play, all under Intrinsic Motivation from a Homies Perspective. Check you out next time. Have a great day.